ついに始まりました WBSS 日本に初めてやってきた世界最大最強トーナメント、えー、井上尚弥のビッグパンチを受けたときに、はい、やばいと思うのか、えー、それともこれならいけると思う、あのー、井上はビッグパンチ出しないので、はい、まずしっかりボールを張っていく世界的な大会でもあるんですけれども、世界的な出来事でもあります、この右です、ねまあ、これはねあの、スパーリングでもよく出してるんで、えー、得意パンチではあったんですけど、まさかこんなに綺麗に決まるとは。はい Ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Ernst, Matchroom Boxing and Tom Loughlin's K2 Promotions in association with Triple G Promotions. And sponsored by Cessna Bank Expo 2017, Capital Holding, JB Sports, StubHub, Dapabet, and WeBuyAnyHouse.com are very proud to bring you 12 rounds for the IBF Flyweight Championship of the World. Official sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, President Daryl Peoples. Our supervisor is Anibal Miramontes. And from the British Boxing Border Control, our steward in charge is the President, Mr. Charles Giles. At ringside, our judges scoring from England, Michael Alexander. From Washington, USA, Glenn Hamada. And from the Philippines, Derek Tatasan. On the bell, our timekeeper, Bob Edgeworth. And when the bell rings, referee in charge from England, Mr. Steve Gray. And now, ladies and gentlemen, time to meet the boxers in the red corner, winning the white shorts with green and gold. At the weigh-in, he scaled seven stone, 13 pounds. A perfect record. Eight contests, eight wins, three wins inside the distance. The reigning English and WBC international silver champion. Tonight, he is the challenger from Across the ring stands the champion, wearing blue and white shorts, also on the scale, 7 stone 13 pounds. From 25 contests, 22 wins, 14 inside the distance, only three defeats. He is the former IBF light flyweight world champion. He is the reigning and defending IBF flyweight champion of the world from Walmart City, Philippines. It's Quadro Alas, John Riel, gets the memo. Come in. Okay, boys, if a cold break, you take one step back. Don't let any punches go on the back of the head. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck, boys. Another fascinating matchup and another amazing chance for a young British fighter to leap up and try and grab that golden ticket. We've got a record 14 world champions for Britain. Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Tony Bellew, James DeGale, Billy Joe Saunders, Liam Smith, Kel Brook, Ricky Burns, Anthony Crawler, Terry Flanagan, Lee Selby, Carl Frampton, Lee Haskins is on later, and Jamie McDonald. Can Charlie Edwards make it sweet 15 and add to that list? But he's got to derail the tough, rugged, strong, deceptively powerful John Real Casimero. Vastly experienced, Paulie. He's been around Vastly. all over the world. Vast experience, and he's going to look to make Charlie Edwards uncomfortable, knowing he hasn't been in with the quality as a professional at the, this level. Right hand already, trying to detract the tactics of Edwards. 
derail them fast. Edwards will be looking for the neat jab, the combinations, the quick feet, the mobility, Dave. Yeah, I was speaking with Danny Vaughan, his, his trainer, earlier on today. Um, they're very, very confident, but Danny as a coach, he, he knows. He's done all the work in the gym. They've worked, they've moved, they've used the skill, they've used the height, the reach, everything he needs to do in this. But once that bell goes, the trainer can't do anything. The fighter's got to implement that game plan. And, you know, we're seeing here, Casemiro's actually getting up to him closer a little bit earlier than what I expected. I thought he'd take, look, another right hand. I, I was expecting it to be a little bit more comfortable early doors for Charlie. Yeah, and Casemiro throwing some big shots. He looks like he's he's looking to make an, ex an explosive statement right off the jump. We're going to see a lot about Charlie Edwards tonight. I wonder if he's looked at him and thought, this is a youngster. He's 23. He could be mistaken for 16 or 17, and maybe he feels he's a bit brittle and he can apply the pressure and he'll crumble. But Edwards, he's looked so far pretty tough for his uh, slender physique. We'll find out more here as he tries to get the ring movement flowing, Edwards, behind that jab. He's just stalking Casemiro, closing down the distance, looking to hurt him early. Yeah, yeah, it seems like Charlie's still trying to settle into the fight. Oh, and then big right hand, nice right hand there by Casemiro. You don't really want to be settling in his fight and taking shots like that, though, do you? No, absolutely not. I, you know, he's trying to stick out his jab. I, I'd say with Charlie, you know, he's a little bit tight right now. He's got to use some feints in there. He keeps coming up short with the jab. Maybe use some feints in there. You know, relax a little bit and see what kind of reactions Casimero gives you. It's a, it's a big night for Charlie, isn't it? This is his ninth pro fight. You know, he's, he's, he's very young, very inexperienced, very green. And, and just on the occasion, you know, the undercard that he's on, it takes a lot of maturity for him to go out there and implement a game plan that he's been working on for weeks. I totally agree with you, Dave. I do, I do, I would like to see once Charlie warms up how he gets things going. He's, he's, Casimero's finding a trajectory on the right hand, but Charlie, for his own sake, at least has that left hand up. Yeah. He's been so confident, Charlie Edwards, since he uh, took the challenge. He accepted it straight away. He watched a couple of rounds of Casimero, and he thought, I can do this guy. He's a plodder. That's a tough start, though, for Edwards. One of the best and most emerging trainers we have, Danny Vaughan, and he's reignited Charlie Edwards even after just a few fights. They've got a wonderfully close relationship over in Marbella where Edwards has honed himself into uh, top physical shape. He's never out of it, really. But for this one, he has to be spot on and so sharp to implement the game plan. And it's going to be hard against this champion, former light flyweight king, now the IBF flyweight holder, jean Riel Casemiro, in his 26th outing, 22 wins, 14 knockouts. He's the power puncher in there. But is Edwards quicker? You see how Charlie's still coming up just a little bit short with the jab. So I'd like to see him change the rhythm on that jab a little bit. Maybe touch with it sometimes. Don't always throw it so hard. And then see if you get a reaction out of Casimero. Maybe you can counter his counter off of that. Toe to toe there. And Casimero trying to drag him in, Dave. He's got to be careful in the exchanges, Charlie. He really has. He doesn't want to be hooking with this guy. Yeah, you got to change that rhythm on that jab because one thing about a jab, no matter how fast it is, if you don't change the speed on it or change the rhythm of it, a good fighter will time it and counterpunch with it off of it. The plan is a 12-round boxing exhibition. That was the idea from Team Edwards. Now he's got to implement it. Lost the first, didn't he? Yeah, I, th I think Danny Vaughan was right. He needs to faint a little bit more before he shoots that jab. Yeah, you see, he's, he's, he's heavily relying on that one single heavy jab. Maybe yeah. even maybe even double up the jab. If you're not going to faint with it, if you're not going to touch with it, maybe throw two in a row and see if you back up back up Casimero. Maybe you can follow it with the right hand. Also, Casimero's looking to punch off, off of your move. He's looking to try to time it. Maybe you, again, like I said earlier, you can maybe counter his counter, but you got to soften up your own jab in order to lure that counter out of Casimero so you can jab, you can counter off of his, off of his shot. See here, yeah, right hand again, Casimero. Just trying to get his combinations flowing, Edwards. 
Yeah. It's an unusual style, isn't it? He's got the Filipino. He has been set for power. You can see, you know what he's going to do. Yeah, he's yeah, looking he's wide leg. He's just looking for big power shots. Every shot especially, he throws is power. Especially a big right hand, right, Dave? Yeah. I mean, he's looking for a huge right hand. At this point, you know, I, I would I would say Charlie should try to almost lure it out of him yeah. and, and get ready to counter it. You know that right hand's coming. You know he's going to shoot it. He's just looking for the moment. Maybe give a, give him that moment. Give him the bait. Let him fall for it. And then counter with a big shot yourself when he throws the right hand. Because Charlie is a taller guy. He can pull on that right hand and counter back with his own left hook. He's, he's a taller guy, but he's, he's struggling a lot to run that jab. He's not making use of his height. Yeah, because he's, he's throwing at the same speed. He's yeah. throwing that same speed jab. And he can really vary it. With, he's got a nice jab. He should really be able to vary it. Yeah, and I, I, I don't think Casemiro is having to work hard to get in range to, to him, which you would hope that early doors, you know, Charlie yeah. making him work hard, use his leg. Underneath every now and then, in and out faster. Yeah? But let's see that I'm touch, touch the body, right hand over the top. But when you come, you've got to come back, back out tight. Yeah? As it goes on, he's going to be slowing. You're going to be getting faster okay. and better. And Jack's the kick to this fight. Use that frame. Top stalker for that. Team GB captain, of course, very much part of the Charlie Edwards team. He trains alongside fighters like Derry Matthews. It's all happening out there in Danny Vaughan's gym. There's a real buzz amongst them. Some electricity and real belief. But has this come too soon? Does he know enough? Is he as experienced over the course of rounds, three-minute professional rounds. Has he got enough in the bank to be able to somehow fathom a way to take this title, bring it back to Britain? Because Casimero has seen many different styles. He's that much further down the track, Paulie. Yeah, he has. He's much. He seems the more relaxed of the two. Charlie seems to have a set game plan. It's about just executing it a little sharper. I mean, clearly the jab is part of the is part of the uh, repertoire here and it's part of the game plan and I see him doubling up a little doubling up on it a little bit more as this third round starts and that's part of the the adjustments that I think he has to make see this is better he's using his feet to get out of the range and not give Casimir anything on return get your jab off look for something if he's, if he's not there then get your feet out of there hunting the body as well Casimiro the first defense of the IBF 112 pound title that he won against the unbeaten Taiyan Nat Ruerong in Beijing and before that he held the light flyweight crown so he's been operating around world class for a few years now and Edwards well he's only had those English flyweight title wins good ones against Lewis Norman and, and Phil Smith then beating Luke Wilton but it is such a leap up you know like Brooks doing later against Golovkin in levels yeah you, you, you've got to think about you know bridging fights and, and learning fights along the way but you know it's, it's refreshing to see kids that are coming out of Team GB wanting to take you know wanting to take a big step to test how good they are already you know but maybe sometimes you look at a video you look at you look at table fighters and you don't think they're as good as what they are they get in the ring and they read fights a little bit better they're, they're a little bit cute and a little bit more difficult to tag and I think I think Charlie expected to land more than what he is doing have you found that through your career thinking about Miguel Cotto and so forth yeah yeah of course you know there's certainly different levels and and you you learn you learn as, as you step your way up but you also mentally know there are those different levels so when you get in the ring with those guys and the fights are tougher you kind of already expected it so you don't panic I don't I don't really see Charlie panicking I just feel like he has to believe in himself a little bit more I think he's as the sharper of the two guys as far as offense is concerned I think he's a better boxer he just has to believe in his speed a little bit more and really bring back some bring some other punches behind that jab either more jabs or a right hand and a hook after it because Casimiro is wasting less energy but he's making it count more when he when he throws yep some neat punches from Edwards, but those right hands, you, you can feel them more from Casimiro. Eye catching for the judges' day. Eye catching without a doubt, yeah. He looks like the guy that's putting the pressure on, making Edwards work harder than what, what he, he needs to be or wants to be doing. We'll find out later. He's pretty good, but is he great? Interesting one here for the IBF flyweight title. Big leap up, step up himself for Epsom's Charlie Edwards, the 23-year-old in only fight number nine, with just three knockouts, debuted last year against this tough Filipino, John Riel Casimero, who's 
come in early. He's got a really big, strong team around him. Has all week. Sean Gibbons, his agent, was telling me he's been through a lot in his life. And he's ready for anything Charlie Edwards can throw at him. He was saying himself, Casemiro, that he was once like Edwards. And he admires his ambition in taking this chance. But it's just too early. Yeah, he's a champion that believes in himself, is Casemiro. And uh, as we talked about earlier, I mean, he's traveled the world and fought all over the world. So he's, he knows what it's like to have to make defenses on the road as well. He's actually had to escape a riot, too, in the ring in Argentina when he beat Luis Alberto Lazare for the interim IBF light flyweight title. It all kicked off. And I think Sean Gibbons broke a couple of ribs in there. There was a big punch up. They were hiding under the canvas. That's, that's the thing, Adam. When you beat when you beat these fighters in their house, their fans aren't particularly happy about no. it. No. This is probably why he's looking so relaxed here at the O2 because nothing like that's going to happen. So. Big right hand again. He tries Casemiro. And a tough upbringing as well. It was hard on the streets of Akebu City. And just started to dig in some body shots. And you see, really winging them. You see, oh, oh big shot. uppercut, and Edwards felt that, and that's a breakthrough there for Casemiro. Just staggered Edwards, and now he knows he's in deep. And this is what I mean by Charlie has to settle down. He's too quick to want to use his legs for defense. Sometimes using the legs for defense isn't the option. Sometimes it's about closing up your defense, closing yourself up, making yourself a smaller target, and not using your legs. As, as he's trying to escape so much, Casimiro's just doing less work and putting him in position to set him up for other offense. This is what I like about Casimiro. He's not rushed. He seems to go reaction out for a shot. He's not rushing it. He, he expects to knock this kid out. That's what that's his mentality. He's, he's working to, to it. Yep. There's a swagger, isn't there? There's a cool, calm, methodical approach. 14 stoppages he has, and that's Good a body shot. shot, which is going to slow the legs of Edwards down. I remember a great trainer, Teddy Atlas, once said, you know, there's three ways, three great methods of defense. There's your legs, there's moving your head, and then, and then there's blocking and covering up. You know, Charlie's only showing the legs. He's not, and he's going to have to settle down and start to catch shots or, or, or move his head and make Casimero miss right from there so he can counter him. You know, if, if you're always using your legs for defense, it's, you're either gonna, he's either going to miss or he's going to land, but you're not going to be able to make him pay the way you need to pay, the way he needs to pay to lose some, some confidence. you you got to Cas force Casimero to break his confidence. He is cut, though. Casimero, left eye. Well, there's something that's gone wrong for the champion, but not much. Yeah, I still have a kiss below. Hi. How you feeling? Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic uppercut he catches him with. Yeah. And he set him up. He, he, he noticed as Charlie kicks back and away, he dips oh. down. And right there, he got him to back away the same way and then rip that uppercut. I'll tell you what, Charlie Edwards showed a good chin to say that. That's, yeah. that's one, one box that will take yeah, here because that, that could have put him to sleep. Because he dipped right into it. Yeah. He's dipping right into Clean. the uppercut. And he recovered really well. Yeah, Casimiro knew that dip was coming. Yeah. But the worrying thing for me, other than the uppercut, Edwards are getting caught with a lot of shots to the body there and they take it out. Of where they could recover from the headshot. The body shots they hit with that round are going to stay with him. Yeah, and I, and I noticed in Casemiro's corner, I don't understand Tagalog, but, but in Casemiro's corner, they are showing with their movements about the body shots to go down to the body. Obviously a tactic for John Real Casemiro. An accidental head clash caused that. Now we're uh, into the fifth round. That will go to the scorecards, of which surely on yours, John Real Casemiro is way ahead. You're way ahead, way ahead. The, 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 the note that I just saw there, the first shot that Casemiro came out and threw was the right hand to the body. And that's the thing, Dave, right? When you got a, an opponent who keeps moving and using his legs, you, take you, you, you take the air right out of the tires. You know, yeah. you keep going to the body. And Casimiro doing what a veteran would do. And, and the thing is, he's using his feet to get himself into range and, and, and also using Charlie's feet coming at him to, yep. to pick those spots, to take those shots. He's very clever. He's a lot more clever than what I, what I thought, just, just watching a little bit of it. On paper, experience, seasoning against youth and ambition and maybe freshness but is this turning into real man against boy here champion and a challenger that's come a little bit too early they've taken the plunge eddie hearn took the call i think from al Heyman's people to say have you got a flyweight that john real casimero can fight and that he thought charlie edwards is a bit young maybe he'll go for a european title next but 
Charlie took it, and Danny Vaughan has got the belief that he can pull this off over the 12 rounds. But he's got a long, long way to go. Right here, you want to see Charlie be first in these kind of moments, especially when Casamero misses. You got to initiate the yeah. offense right back. Oh. That right hand again, just waiting for the counter. Well, when, when Edwards is stepping in with that jab, he's leaving his back foot a little bit far behind, just making it a little bit easier for him to get count with that right hand. Casamero, who's moved from. Kebu City to Ormoc City, but he's really a, a man of the world. Good shot right here from Charlie. That was the best right hand he landed in the fight, right? Good yeah. shot. I'll give him a lot of confidence. He needs a little bit of confidence. And it's about that, isn't it, yeah. Paulie? Round after round, when you go in too early, too soon, maybe to something, that you've got to find yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. And eventually, it's, you're going to have to make a decision that you were going to refuse to lose. If Charlie starts to continue to lose these rounds, He's gonna have to make the adjustment and, and, and say, you know what, did I come here to not win the world title tonight or do I'm not gonna take more chances? These, these jabs that he's shooting are terrific, but a lot of them are not landing the way they need to, and he's not following them up with anything substantial. It is better, though, from Charlie Edwards doubling up the jab, but still he's dangerous, Casemiro. And that's the thing, if he can get away from not, from not getting hit with right hands like that, he would win the round on just on controlling the distance, but Casemiro works about one-third less but then he'll land a big right hand here and there, and it, it'll match whatever Charlie's doing. Because Charlie can win the round on controlling the range if he, design, if he doesn't allow himself to get hit. What a slight shift in the plot, nothing dynamic, but um, maybe more success than Danny Ball. Don't go again. When you're there, step back out again. The back is the difference all the time. The back hand's on now. Yeah, and the one of the minute. You've got to let it go. Yeah, just time it. Well, keep like? the shape of doing what you're doing. Box and keep the shape. Keep the shape on sometimes. Keep the shape as well. But chap, Vince, put them under pressure. He's feeling it. I'm telling you, he is. Okay, now for you. All the best shots now. You know what I mean? Do you get right stronger? Hand. Let's see you step to your right now. Yeah. Step to your right more. Get your own right hand going and bring it up the middle. All right, that was a better round. That was your best round up to now. His right it was his best round. Yeah, Danny's right. Oh, he's right in what he's telling as well. And it's, it's nice to see how calm and relaxed Charlie is in the corner. It shows a lot of maturity. But let's not forget, he, he got hurt in the previous round and he's come back and had his best round in the fight. Shows a lot of guts and character like this. This is the sixth round. It's the 164th of a career that started in 2007 for John Real Casemiro. And this is only the 57th for Charlie Edwards. That's the difference. Casemiro still looking for that right hand over the top of the jab. He's going to look for that all night. And, yeah, and that body shot. I was just about to say, and the body shot. I expect him to throw a lot more body shots than this. So the judges, they'll be looking at work rate or accuracy. You know, that last round probably Edwards is, but, you know, these ones could be split a little bit, Paulie. Yeah, they're close. There's a lot of cl there is there is close rounds, but a lot of Edwards shots, early doors especially, were, were missing, falling short, and whereas Casemiro looked comfortable pressing the action and landing the heavy shots. See, even if, even if Charlie's not doing a whole lot here, if he's, he's controlling the range with his jab, if he can just do this and avoid getting hit with too many big shots or any big shots during the round, you know, he'd win the round on the activity, on the control in the range, you know. Yeah, sometimes it's, it's good enough just to steal around here. Yeah, yeah you know, you just don't allow Casimero to get, to get yeah. into an comfort zone. Casimero can try, he can miss. You can keep controlling range with your jab, with your boxing ability. You're winning the round, I'll win generalship. So, Paulie, he could begin to frustrate Casimero. Exactly. But here's a question. Has he got the power to keep him off with just the three knockouts at well, a lower level? Well, maybe he doesn't. But, you know, if you're not landing punches, if you're missing like this, and then Charles is continuing to, to bury you with his jab, you're going to lose the rounds, and it's mathematics. You win more rounds than you lose, you win the fight. You see, you look at, you, you look at Casemiro, how he's loaded up on every single shot. Surely, as the fight goes on, goes on, if he keeps missing with these shots, he's going to get tired, he's going to get ragged. And then maybe that's where Charlie's fitness and youth and, and energy could, could take over. You see, Casemiro is starting to reach more to the body and, and go less to the head as he's missing more of those head shots. Yeah. Maybe he felt, Casemiro, that he would go out and make a, a statement early. 
that Edwards would fold as he lands another body shot. But and Casimiro's attack this round has been almost exclusively to the body. When he tried to the head, he missed every time so far. He's showing grit, isn't he, Edwards? And a good ring brain too to just try and keep his composure. Stick to the tactics. No real panic, though. No, he's, he, he, he may look like a young, young, young baby, but you look at him and, and how he's fighting. He's showing a lot, a lot of toughness in there. He's showing that like, he's fighting like a man, which is what he needs in this fight. When he's, he's getting more confident in the right hand. He's, uh, his corner did say start using more of the right hands, and he's getting more confident in shooting that right hand. Win or lose this, it could be the making uh, of this, Charlie Edwards. This will bring him on under hundredfold. We really will. These are the fights that young young fighters learn. Whether it's a world title fight or not, whether you win it or not, he's going to improve. Just a bit of revving around the left you know, ear another, of Charlie Edwards. Another thing he did in the corner, they told him, walk up, go to your right, go away from his right hand. He did a good job of that that round. This is what we've been talking about in the gym. Everything what we're doing, this is not new to us. What's it, what, we're what we're doing here now is what we've been Better working on. Edwards. Now he's getting desperate. As You've got to invite him in with that half a step. Continue to, to build up to one of the... Uh, Greta rivals onto the British scene in recent years. We are thrilled to have him with us. Gennady Golovkin is in the building. Doesn't it show, Dave? You've been around the domestic game for so long. We can attract this sort of star quality. Oh, it's fantastic, Adam. British boxing, I've said all along, is flying at the moment. To bring somebody like Triple G over is amazing. We even got Paulie Malinagi to come. <laughs> should have, you should have more big fights here. It seems like they're more appreciated by these fans, I'll tell you. Better from Charlie Edwards? Yes, better last round. Again, good instruction from the corner. Bring out the more of the right hand. Go to his own right, which would take him away from the Casimero right hand. And Casimero, I, I, dare I say, for the first time, looked a little bit of that round. Oh. Good right hand to the head, though. We'll watch the uh, leaky defense. Edwards, is he going to take risks? Is he going to get back behind that jab? And he said, he's oh, getting it now. Show. What? He went both times he got him with right hands this round. He was going to his left. He's got to make an adjustment to go to his right. Last round he did a great job with that. See the last two rounds, I've actually given, I've, I've actually given Charlie the last two rounds because he, he's, he's implemented what Danny's been wanting him to do. He has kept away from that right hand and he has stuck to his boxing and, and picked his spots. This round he started off going back to his left, like Paulie says, and he's getting caught with these. He needs to get back to his game plan. Casimero did lose to Amnet Ruaron in June last year. But apart from that recent form, there's been knockout form. A win in 11, a win in 1, in 2, in 4. That's the power that he has. And he hasn't taken Edwards out early, but he might feel that down the stretch, he'll still have enough zip about him, especially if he continues to land the body shots like that. Something that might come into play later on, Adam. Casimir's got a, a, a history of struggling to make this weight. Yeah. Now, you don't know how he's made the weight. He obviously, he's made the weight, but you don't know how he's made the weight. If a guy normally struggles to make the weight, then odds are he could have struggled on this one. And, and, and the amount he's loading up on shots and, and missing as well as landing, and missing especially, you know, he, he could tie down the stretch and he, it, could, he could tie all of a sudden. It's happened, I think, three times in his career. One time he was five and three quarter pounds above the weight limit. So that's not a guy that makes his weight, weight limit easy. That means he had an extra meal during the week. <laughs> a good meal that he, a meal that wasn't healthy either. That's a good little body shot. He's going to be told to keep them up here, Casimero. He had a warning a little bit of time ago by Steve Gray. But he's starting to just get through, and Edwards felt that. Oh, big shots here from Casimero, and Charlie Edwards has to hold on and cling. And has he got the experience and knowledge keeps, and know how to do it? He keeps ducking the same way. Yeah, Casimero yeah. knows he keeps throwing the uppercut. Charlie has to make an adjustment in the way he's slipping that shot. Inside the last 30 of the seventh round, he was doing better in the last couple of sessions, Edwards. Or at least if he's going to duck that way, put his hand in front of his face, palm down, so you catch the uppercut. Was that an experience, Dave? Yeah, eight, eight fights. You don't learn these sort of things until it comes by a situation like this, you know? You're going you're gonna to duck that way, hand in front of your face, palm facing the floor, open glove, and what happens? You'll catch the uppercut at least. Big hooks going in from Casimero, Just who feels he's more powerful, stronger, and in charge, and look at that. 
this one you're gonna have these moments we talked about this yeah come on you gotta take deep now and show me what you've got yeah, yeah? get your shin down get that left hand tight and just get back on that boxing let's just box him yeah, you're bending down, you're gonna fascinating to listening into danny Bourne, isn't it he's absolutely right lumps and bumps along the way this is what i told you would happen danny knows he's boxing he's worked with a lot of high class fighters you know including people like derry matthews who's been in so many big fights so he's got the experience he's got the experience to bring this kid through this Good uppercuts there, that, that's the shot. Again, Edwards is showing his toughness. Yeah. But it's, it's, again, it's, 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 it's loading big on the right hand. It's always to the right hand. So if Charlie can escape going to his own right instead of hitting his own left, I mean, almost all of this sustained offense from Casimero is with the right hand, yes. be it the overhand right or the, or the uppercut. Hey, even the body shots are all right hands. Yeah, yeah, even the body shots, you're right. Five rounds to go in this IVF flyweight title. Judges Michael Alexander just in front of us from Britain, Glenn Hamada from the USA, Danarek taps her down from the Philippines. I wonder how they're seeing things. They might not be needed if this uh, ferocious attack from Casimero continues. He wants the knockout here. He's really going for it. He's really going for it. Charlie's just got to, he's got to frustrate him this round and not give him anything this round. Don't let him hit him with anything hard. Get on the end of the jab, time up when he gets close, just don't be there the to thing be is, hit. The thing is, Dave, he's already been hit with those at earlier hard assault to start the round. He's got to take back control of this round. There's the body shot again. Showing a decent chin here, as you said earlier, Dave, Charlie Edwards, but can he take sustained punishment in a hard 12-round fight? These are questions, aren't they, as you get towards the championship rounds. Jim Watt used to tell me this. There's often a round that makes the difference could this be the one yeah yeah that's that's, that's quite possible i mean it, the unfortunate thing is he's had a couple of good rounds on the bounce and his confidence will have been raised and then he's just had a nightmare round and, and so far in this round he's taking some big shots as well so he's he's got to get that confidence back that's especially with your young fighter you need to have that confidence you see how casimero just sticks out those touch shots and he's just looking for a reaction from charlie so he can set him up that's what i'd like to see charlie do with his own left hand not always throw the jab so hard put out those touch shots and see the reactions you get and set up casimero casimero is actually doing it to him there big right hand another one oh, oh and he's just gripping down on that gum shield charlie edwards and all the hours of training he's got to suck it up but it's all very well in sparring and in the amateur ring and in the young pros but this is real and this is world championship level and it is tough paulie you've been there yeah. so many times yeah, and charlie's now is using his legs he's just trying to escape this is getting tough. This is getting really tough for Charlie. I, I, you wonder if Casimero is, is going to beat the willingness to win out of Charlie. Or if he's he going to try to survive or is he going to continue to try to win. It's not an easy decision when the fight becomes this difficult. Got to work from Edwards there. Can he sustain it? He had a good couple of rounds in the middle of the fight. It's starting just again to seep away from him. Hurt. A little bit affected, maybe confidence-wise as well. What do you think in that? Yeah, def definitely his confidence is affected. You know, he, you can see it in his eyes almost, really. He's, he's just looking for a way just to stop this onslaught, stop these power shots coming his way. He's kind of like not looking for a way to win the round, win the fight. You know, he needs, he needs to have a little bit of success. He's showing bags of courage. He's showing bags of heart in there. And, and to be honest, a really good chin. Yeah. Okay. Let's show me a bit of ball count. Let's show me what you've got, yeah? yeah. Okay, we said we're gonna have the moments like this. It's gonna get, you know, it's gonna get like this sometimes. You've got to dig deep now. Just whispered you something with Danny Vaughan's ear there, Dave. I was trying to pick that up out of my couldn't I couldn't hear what he was saying. There, so you can see they're just not ruffled at all in, in Casimero's corner. They're not they're expecting to stop Charlie. Feliciano. Agaburgo in the corner with Jason Casimero, John Reel's brother. I, I, once again, I like the instructions in the corner from Danny Vaughan, though. Keep that left hand up and use your right uppercut, left hook, when he comes in, when he flies in. And what does that mean? Casimero comes in with wide over the top right yeah. hand. So if you're blocking with your left hand, watch what Casimero's head winds up when he throws the overhand right. It's in the trajectory for the uppercut to be thrown by Edwards with his right hand. So 
if he, if he does catch the Casimero right hand with left hand, he can shoot back with the uppercut and left hook. I like the instructions from Vaughn. Just, it just... It's just Edwards need to be consistent with his jab on the outside, not take these big shots, and come back with a counter. I do believe Casimero needs to be countered to be domesticated a little bit. Yeah, the, the only problem with that is, you know, as a young kid, he's, he's had a couple of rough rounds where he's getting caught. He's yeah. feeling those over the yeah. so, so, so when your confidence is low, to, to have yeah. the confidence Body to stand shot. there and, and, and look at blocking and countering straight off, put yourself yeah. in that danger zone, sometimes at this stage of a fight, the confidence might not just be there to, to carry yeah, right. out the it, it might have been beaten out of him at this point. You're right. Still stalking forward. Casimero, Edwards attempting the jab. Still utilizing his feet, moving as free as he can, trying to uh, rat a tat, get the uh, punches home that he's uh, crafted since an 11 year old. Really good member of Team GB, had a, a great rivalry with Jack Bateson and showing some skills here. Edwards, will it be enough though at the moment? On your cards, no, at no moment, way. No, at the moment, no. And and the worrying thing is that is is that on each attack that Casamayo's launching, Charlie looks like he's worried. He, he, you know, he's not he's not got the experience of uh, looking at the body shots that he's taking there. They hurt and they stay with you. And this is what it is to be a top pro and a top amateur. You know, sometimes people see the Olympics uh, that just passed and they see the handful of pros that were there look bad and they say, oh, well, maybe the amateurs can compete. Not in a 12-round fight. This is the thing about being a pro. The sustained attack and 12-round fight, the little nuances, the little adjustments, they take their toll as the fight wears on. This is the difference of being a world-class pro. Charlie Edwards may get there one day, but it seems like he's, this is going to be a learning fight for him tonight i think what will have, what will have um, knocked the confidence in, in the whole camp whole corner team everything is i don't think they expected casimero to get to him until you know mid rounds I, i'm sure they expected to win the first few rounds with his feet with his yeah. with his fast jab and just pop him pop him all you know for the first four or five rounds and then i'm sure they expected to become a hard fight where he had to show his guts after in the later stage of the fight nice right hand there by edwards a second ago Tom Stalker living and breathing every moment of it. Bellowing instructions to Charlie Edwards, applauding when he does land. There's real camaraderie in that blue corner. And notice, notice Casimero cutting the ring off, making Edwards work two or three times as hard. Everybody's convinced that Casimero will tire and Edwards won't in the, in the Edwards corner, but Casimero's the one saving his energy. Foley, I'll be straight with you. I am very impressed with how, how Casimero is putting the ring off. I didn't expect him to have a good beat. Yeah, he's 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 he looks like he's in a great beat. Let me see that right hand now underneath. One, two, jab, right hand underneath. Step back out, left hand's got to be tight all the time. Okay? Let's just see him move your feet more. Move to your left, then go right. Make him work all the time. I want to see more things now. I need to see that uppercut when he comes. He's walking on to it, he's getting desperate. Uppercut left through to move. Okay? Okay? You stick to the boxing. Nine minutes left. Nine minutes left. Champion. Championship. Wait. But as you said, like you said last round, Dave, his confidence is knocked out. He's going into flight every round. He's yeah. moving way too much yeah. now. I call that going into flight. He's, he's almost in flight mode, and you can't set up any sustained offense when you're in flight mode. Mm. And we're already in round number 10. Nine minutes to go. Dave, Paulie, how are you seeing it on, on the cards? The three judges, obviously what matters, but what's your feeling at the moment? I've got it, I've got it wide for Casimero. Yeah, yeah I've, got, I've got Casimero way ahead. I, I, I think Charlie needs to finish, a big finish for this fight. And I like how he's holding his ground. He started, at least he started the round holding his ground. You've got to make the decision here. What are you going to do? Are you going to go for it, or are you going to settle with the points loss? Good right hand from Edwards. Nice right hand. Yeah, lovely shot there. And a little push for good measure on the break. Still got that mean streak in him. There has been signs from Edwards. Would the team, Dave, right to take the opportunity here? Or would you have waited, say, a year or two? Adam, he's, he's not disgraced himself. He's, sh he's shown a lot of character in this yep. fight. And it's a fight that's going to bring him on. People are too afraid to lose their unbeaten record. If you're going to get beat, you might as well get beat in a world title fight. You know? And like I said... I think that's a good point. Paul, do you agree? Yeah, yeah. It was worth, worth taking a shot, especially at this weight class. You know, the guys tend to get title shots a little, a little earlier in this weight class. So, you know, you, even if you lose, you're not going to disgrace yourself. Especially the way Charlie's been competitive. And, and when trying every round. Well, let's be honest, there's not as many of you, are there, Dave? You struggled when you were in that division. So when, when, when I boxed, 
uh, way back. He was about 26 bottles in Britain. Now, in the oh, 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 beautiful shot. Walk into it. Straight into it. And he's hurt badly here, Charlie Edwards. He's going to do very well to recover. He's brave. He gets to his feet. His legs have gone. He's being asked to walk forward. Steve Gray's giving him every opportunity. Every opportunity. Casemiro wants to get on with it. There's over a minute left. He's got a hold. Does he have the experience to hold? Can he recover from that? I don't think so. Steve Gray holds him. It is over. John Real Casemiro successfully defends his IVF title on the road again. And it was a brave effort from Charlie Edwards. But unfortunately, it just came too soon. He didn't quite know enough. Patches there from Edwards. A real learning fight, guys. But Casemiro, take your hat off to him. This is a very good world champion, Adam. Just take your hat off to him, he's right. Totally. I'm really impressed with him. He's come over here. He was comfortable. He was laid back. He never rushed anything. Even when he got Charlie in, in trouble earlier on in the fight, he didn't rush it. He didn't rush things. He just kept... He looked, he looked cool as a cucumber all week, and he looked yeah. cool as a cucumber yeah. throughout the fight. He did. There was a calm and confident feel about the whole camp of Casemiro. Sean Gibbons telling me he's not going to be worried about coming here. <laughs> he's not at <laughs> he all. He's been all everywhere. He's been involved in so much. And Charlie Edwards, well, he took the opportunity. He wanted it so badly, and he tried everything. That left you hook, you hook with a hooker, right? Well, what they say, don't hook with a hooker. Don't hook with a hooker. You know, the thing is, he got up. He still got up from that shot. That shows, you know, what kind of kid this is. You know, he's, he's had a, cut, a rough few rounds, but he's, he's got nailed, and he's still got up trying to win this fight. I take my hat off to him. He'll come again. This will do him. This will do him in the world of good. There's a lot of things to learn in experience, and he will come again. Terrific character from Charlie Edwards. Education may be a painful one tonight, but he took that opportunity, and he got to say that John Real Casimero did his job as champion. He fought with his heart on his sleeve all night. Charlie did. Ch Casimero is a tough veteran world champion. It is not always that we win our first world title shots, but it doesn't mean you're not going to come back and win a world title again. Look at these shots. You know, he's a, he's, a, he's a good finisher, Casemiro. He is. I would have loved to see Charlie good. Hall, but as Adam said, he just doesn't have yeah. the experience to think of it. Yeah. You know, when you're young, you're full of bravado. You know, you, 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 yeah. you don't want to hold, you know, on the yeah. stage. And, and you know what it is, too, Adam, uh, Dave, you know what the weird thing is, guys? In the gym, you prepare only to win. Yeah. You never, you know, I never really see anybody preparing to hold when they're hurt. You know what yeah. I mean? It's the weirdest thing because I, I, it's like they, nobody wants to think of the negativity. Yeah. Oh, no, well, we're not going to go down. We're not going to be hurt. But it's a possibility. It's maybe, it's maybe it's also something to work on in the gym, how to hold when you're hurt, how to escape danger. Good respect between the pair as we knew there would be. Charlie Edwards, no question, he'll come again. But the night here in the flyweight division belongs to the Filipino Jean Real Casimero. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Steve Gray will bring together both boxers as he does so. Please, your appreciation for both boxers in the ring. The end comes, ladies and gentlemen, at 1 minute 57 seconds of round number 10. Referee Steve Gray stops the contest. In his opinion, Charlie Edwards in no position to continue. The winner, and still, the IBF flyweight champion of the world, John Riel Gessamero. Well, a brave effort from Charlie Edwards, but ultimately... Japan in the sparkling shorts, Rodriguez from Puerto Rico in the white, in a way with a startling record of getting things done quickly. Um, Rodriguez started coming forward. Uh, Step forward and getting that jab in and right hand as well. Any round is a it's, a it's a not great ratio of a heavy with. Rodriguez never off his feet. Big right hand in a way early on. Rodriguez took it. Gritted on his gum shield and came back with a flurry of his own. Toe to toe action, first round. Spectacular. Oh, they're, they're winging these punches in, these two. It's almost a macho battle in these first 35. And that's, I think, why he's got the knockout ratio that he has. A very, very dangerous. 
This has been a good start from Rodriguez, and there's that stunning right hand. Oh, big shot to the bottom. But it was an accident, the one, and, and it's in a way just on the fight on. Good man. All punches have come from Enrique, and, that, and I think that made a difference. Well, for this fight, he's, he's eaten a couple there. My, those punches from Inoue, and there's a right hand gone in too from Inoue. This is a, a fearsome flurry, and he's done. He's got him with a left for the first time in his career. Corner right above us, he'll dust down. He's ready to go again, Is Rodriguez. Here comes Inoue. Oh, he's got into the body. Oh, what a shot. Get you, Inoue is waiting. Still two minutes to go, Jim. Oh, this is unbelievable from Inoue. Third time he's gone down. Rocks to the core, another count, it's over. Michael Alexander waves it off in the second. Shoto, Shoto. Progressing to the WBSS final and the new IBF bantamweight champion of the world, Noya Inoue. Well, we know that Tete is a terrific technical boxer and also that he's got power, but he's not been in the ring competitively since October last year. In that time, Casimero has had three knockout victories. His last four wins have all come by stoppage. He is a banger and he is most definitely here thinking and believing that he can defeat this brilliant South African. Well, the obvious <laughs> tactic is to get inside that, that beautiful long jab there of Teddy. Which is, is achievable, but the problem is then you have that uppercut to worry about. We, we've seen that, how, how effective that could be in the past. He takes a little half a step back, Teddy, and then whips that uppercut right through the middle. Tate had one win, which came in 11 seconds, the quickest ever in a world title fight. Well, it's not, uh, I suspect that might never be broken. <laughs> Casimero, who'll be known to British fans as the man who stopped Charlie Edwards in September three years ago in an IBF flyweight title defence. He won this interim title in February against Ricardo Espinosa and then defended it in August against Cesar Ramirez, both those came by way of stoppage. Well, he's a quality operator, and if you allow him, if you allow him for, forward momentum, and he gets it on his side, then he's, he's a really hard man to deter, he really is. So for Tete, this is keeping him in his place all the time. Pivoting on that front foot, whipping that jab out, not shortening the gap. Tete, tremendous athlete, stands five foot nine, and only weighed eight stone four the way in comfortably made the 8-6 limit that's that and that's the crazy part of it oh, oh he makes the weight relatively comfortable it's never comfortable making any weight but he doesn't look as drawn as you see other fighters and that's uh, one of life's mysteries John he wants the brilliant Japanese fighter Noya Inui who beat Nonito Donaire in that terrific fight what was it three weeks ago oh, great great fight. great fight wasn't it and uh, it should, could have been Tete in the final, had he been able to beat Denaire, but he pulled out of that super series with a shoulder injury. It was the right arm, the right shoulder, and that sort of an injury, it's kind of psychological, which he's got to trust himself to be yeah, able to throw it. Yeah, of course you have, because that, again, that right hand, which is the jab hand, of course, and Tete is, is his most important weapon. occasion he kind of just does enough we commentated oh, on a fight over in Yekaterinburg last year it was that fight last October yeah. and that was that sort of fight wasn't it he won by about a four or five point margin but he, he never really took any risks at all no I, I, you know, he, he can coast the fight can't he so he can just he can stick in second gear just pick you off and be happy with that 
Well, fairly quiet opening round. Bell just coming up as uh, Casimero tries to launch that right hand and just whips it through thin air. to the second round. How did you score that one, Barry? I gave it a tete. I think just you know, some of those flicking jabs were enough to give him the edge for me. Casemiro didn't really do, uh, do enough, if anything, to be fair. Quiet sort of opener, wasn't it? will come when Casimero lands one of those big punches if or when he or, or when he fully commits to an attack he's jumped into a few attacks but I don't think he's been fully committed if he, when he does that if he can be effective or if Teti can read it and as we said earlier whip that uppercut in, in the, in the, on the target Casimero promoted by the legendary Manny Pacquiao Gibbons representing the little master over here. He's the chief executive officer or something of uh, Pacquiao Promotions. Or something. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a significant job. Isn't it? He introduced himself to me as that and also as the president, so I'm not sure I'm not sure which it was. Casemiro got too much experience just to rush in because he knows he'll walk on the shot. But also, with him not doing that, he's not being remotely effective. And even though Ted is not doing enough, he should do a lot more with that, with that right jab, to be fair. Tete just looks huge in comparison to Casemiro. That's an advantage he always has over Trippus every fight that he's faced. We talked about moving up in weights, that might happen at some point. And I guess another option, talked about Inui, but Rigondo. Yep. The Cuban is fighting Liborio Solis for the regular WBA title. That's coming up in about three weeks. And he's, Tete's talked about fighting Rigondo, or as he's correctly pronounced with the uh, Spanish accent, Rigondo. And well, two absolute geniuses, but it could also be a stink out of a fight. Oh. They might like, just both be looking at each other. Could be a chess match. Yeah, each other to make the first move, yeah. Which this is a little bit at the moment. Yeah, it is. You know, and again, Casemiro was trying to trying to attack, but oh, short little right hand there. I thought it was half a head as well. So the Tete's entourage came to the ring, singing and dancing as the second round ends. Come back to Birmingham, this is the WBO Bantamweight title fight and Zolani Tete, the taller man, that's where he goes in and the, looks as though there's a clash of heads there. No, I think it's a good... Oh, well, it is actually, yeah, I thought it was a good right hand and half a head, but yeah, it was a full bloody clash of heads, wasn't it? Two rounds gone, how have you scored them both? Yeah, I've given both to Tete, but, you know, he's only barely doing enough, John, I just think... Well, it's what we said, isn't it? I mean, yeah. this is what he did against uh, Mikhail Aloya when he fought over in Yekaterinburg in Russia last uh, October. Well, he's, well obviously, oh, that's better there for Casemiro. Doubling up on the jab. Well, I guess he thinks, though, know, it's, it's your move to close the gap, not mine. I'm the taller fight with a longer reach. I, I want to keep it up. You've got to make, you got to try and bring it to me. Thanks of experience, though, Casemiro. Record of five wins and two defeats in world title fights. Tete five and one. He's won his last 12 since September 2012. Oh, 
Casimiro got him. He's got him with a body no, He's given hits. He's got him with a body shot. Was it? No, it was on the chin. It was. It was a short right hook to the chin. And he's in trouble. He's, all over the place. he's in real trouble. Tete's in a lot of trouble. And the referee wants to look at him. He's allowing it to continue. But can Casimiro take him out here? It happened so quickly. And he's still got a long way to go in this round. There's one minute 20 seconds. And Tete still looks unsteady. He's got to buy some time here and make Casimiro miss. Casimiro needs to pick his punches and he can't find the clean shot and he falls down. Tete, I don't think there was a punch which put him down. He just collapsed to the canvas. He's not down recovered the from the first time. shot. He's not recovered from the first knockdown. I'm sure of it. Referee asking, is he OK? Casimero wants to finish it right here, right now, and finish it he has. The title changes hands in sensational fashion. Zolani Tete stopped by John Real Casimero of the Philippines, and the big South African favourite suffers a defeat which was simply not expected, no way. Well, we're sat here just praising Tete up. And all of a sudden, Casimiro comes in with a short hook, hit, uh, sort of turns the body, hits, hit, hits Tete sort of flush on the chin, squared up, and that was it. He crumbled. It, was, I, it caught him on the on the blind side from where we're sitting, and you, you, I mean, you did well to pick that up because it was such a quick, short shot. It was. He well, did the attack there, and, you know, and, and we're saying how good Tete is, and he waits and he waits for you to make the mistake, waits for you to engage. But we didn't know, we wouldn't give Casimiro enough credit for all the experience he has and how quick he can close the gap. And it was a lovely, a lovely short, powerful hook. But I think it was a right hook. Called, well, it's called... a minute or more, maybe two minutes now, since that punch was landed. It's only just now that Tete's got back to his feet. He, he... he was really, really badly stunned by this. But I see it now here, nothing's happening. Now all of a sudden, look, he doubles up really quick, but the first one well, did all the damage and he was gone. Well, so you see, that's, you can't see it there by the referee, but, but it was a great shot. He just he stepped around and the left foot's gone out, outside of the right foot of the south floor. I don't know, right, right on the right temple. Hand. Right on the temple, right short little right foot, right on the temple. And he does it again, doubles it up again, but the first one did all the damage. He jumps in with a body shot, which I, initially I thought was what had done it, and then he lands with two right hands to the side of the head. And he's done, now look at this now, this is, there's nothing really clean conclusive. He got caught on the top of the head there, Teddy. But he wasn't becoming from the first one. You know, the referee could have easily stepped in after the first knockdown. But and, and the referee was Steve Green was right to step in there. Tete not defending himself, his eyes were all over the place. And wow, what a win. Tete sitting down again on the stool in the ring. And he still looks very, very dazed by what's happened in there. Meanwhile, celebrations on the other side of the ring, hugs and kisses for a new champion. And Casimiro, of course, now is a three-weight world champion, having been a former light fly and flyweight world champion. And here he is, putting himself right into the mix. And they talked about Tete against Inui. I wonder if it might be Casimiro against Inui now. And, and to be fair, I feel like we didn't give Casimiro enough credit because he's a world-class fighter. But I just felt that he was too small, John, didn't he? he was too small coming up the weights that he wouldn't be able to maybe cope with Tete's reach and physical size. The and his speed as well, you know. Yeah, I mean, of course, I, yeah. But the fact that Tete hadn't fought for over a year, I wonder if oh, that might I, be a, Maybe, a maybe not, but I don't think you can take anything away from Casemiro. What he, no, he just, he, he seen the gap, he took that step on the outside, threw a lovely short right hook, caught him on the temple, doubled it up to make sure, and then jumped all over him. I think it was a fantastic, a fantastic result. Coming away from home, we know Tete's not home, he feels like he's at home here. Coming away from home, really, as the opponent, no one really thought he would win. No, no people forgot that he's a two eight world champion. No one could thought he could win. And he, he what a sensational victory for him. And Tete, I'm, I'm, I'm a lo happy for him. lovely fella, Tete, in floods of tears, being consoled by his trainer, Loiso Mutaya. But it's all about the other man, Casimero. The man from Ormoc City in the Philippines. And he's the one who just cannot stop smiling. Doctor just checking on Tete once again. The belt is there. He had the interim belt already, of course. 
with Tete being inactive for the last year, and now he gets the world title outright. The WBO belt will be his, and where now Tete from here? Loves the United Kingdom, Tete. He's loved being based over here. But it's going to be celebrations in the Philippines, and celebration for the Pacquiao camp. Absolutely delighted by what their man has produced. Thomas Trivers up there waiting for an opportunity to confirm the result. You're talking about Tete, and he does love the UK, Tete. Casemiro got to love the UK. Because he comes over and he gets and he gets come from beyond wins every time. Well, not come from beyond with with Edwards, but Edwards, 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 Edwards crowning crowning glory, and he and he does a job on him, and he does a job on Tete. Well, that's is you know if you've never heard of Zelani Tete, you have to trust me and Barry. He is an out, he has been an outstanding fighter, an outstanding champion, and to give him a beating like that, a shock defeat like that. You have to give all credit to Casimero, you really do. Oh, you do, and you know, and and you know, he must be a nice guy, because Charlie Edwards is ringside. And he's well, travelled up, he's travelled up to see him, so there must be something there. And so you've got to give him, every, though, he ticks every box that you'd want from a champion. But what a win, and what a statement he makes in a what, in a fantastic division. There is Charlie Edwards at ringside, enjoying the moment. I wonder if he knows we're talking about him. And there's. The moment which makes boxing special. Congratulations from Tete to the new champion. We didn't really see that one coming. And here now is Thomas Trimer. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. Two minutes, 14 seconds of round number three. Our referee in charge, Steve Gray, waves it off. Therefore, your winner by way of Tete. In the dressing room, I want you to obey my commands at all times and protect yourselves at all times. Anything below this point is a low blow. So look Made adjustments into his 30s. Oh, Stiff right hand lands that time. And then air comes back with that famous left hook. Both men exchange it all. He's taking them well there, the there, hasn't he? Stays right hand to the body. Like you say, Chris, is that sitting trapped all the time. Just the warning signs for him that if he does overcommit, he will be tagged. Well, they also don't hook with a hooker, and it applies to them both. They both did it in that first round, and Air missed. He knew I landed, and it will be those margins, Baron, in a fight where one fighter has faded for. It was Denair who was the trap setter in the glory years of his career. So he knows he carries the power. Just the ones that Denair isn't able to read, but he's walking through them so far. Catches Inouye on the chin, short left hook. He's trying to get this into the later round. It's so important he does it, dictating the pace, making Inouye here. We see that was the one that took him off balance. Here comes the left hook. There we Bang go. On the the shot. Right. These were, of course, then the right Denair. Matching his footwork, keeping him against the road stuff. Good positive stuff from Denair. Really is, you know, there's always. And difficult to watch. Good stuff. Good short left hook went in and again from Inoue. It's better work from Inoue. Notice he's got those hands high for the first minutes of each round since the cut. That will be this stage in the contest and they're walking forward. The contest, not having to have done much. So he's still fresh himself. And as you say, Inoue just in the ascendancy. That was the shot that just landed. Passed the test so far, but only one needs this worth for both of the men in the final room, just as we say it, the right hand lands, and it's staggered Lenito Denaire, who fires back with a left hook. Inoue, sensing the moment, steps on him now. How much of this is Denaire seeing coming? Covers up, rolls, but his legs are not what they were. Another right hand lands. Moments to the bow as Inoue opens up. Check left hook from Denaire, he's firing away, but he is hurt here. Look it well, but that was a big round. And there we go, there's the right hand. Lovely shot over the jab. The knees buckled. Over a decade, his senior. Herb. Five and a half rounds. Now, can 
cannot afford to fuss. Takes one contest to remove that jabs. Oh, lovely double jab, right quick. It's very spiteful. Good his long career. But Inoue now starting to turn the heat up with 45 seconds on the clock. Yeah, the spiteful shots, Chris. Neither men have gone down. I don't know what the odds would have been on it. Wouldn't have got much, though. And now comes Inoue again with a minute on the clock because he just weathered an air, just reminds him why his reputation as a puncher is. As it is, uppercut, left hook. And Inoue responded. And that blood really now starting to pour. And is it going into the eye? Could that be a problem? Right hand from... There's that jab. Back, back comes Denaire. Quick. For round nine of uh, a contest that you can throw back. Oh! Count to right hand from Lenito Denaire. Wow. He knew a rock to his boots and Denaire now. Just sensing a moment here in round number nine. But he knows that he can't rush in. He knows he has to be. Now, you know, there's a huge amount of. I mean, wow. that's a lovely right hand. Really, really was. Wiley didn't let him. There we go, right on the chin. I mean, that that was a lovely shot. He took it so well when he though he was hurt. He managed to grab hold of him and sort of slow things down. Denaire Inoue rips to the body, head snapped back by, believe you're, you know, your own hype and... Nation on the inside, Denaire goes a little flat-footed for the first. Misses now, Inoue's round. Oh, and again! He hurt Denaire there and he did. Right hand, left foot, then another right hand. Denaire just inching back for the first time in the round. Inoue, stop shit rounds. Right oh! Inoue, Denaire is hurt here. He's dealing with it well, but... Listen to the home crowd now, really get behind him. That's a lovely left to the body. Lovely shot. I don't know what the ref's doing. Oh, he's counting now. That was a lovely left to the body, Chris. Well, he's down for only the third time in his career. It was respectful from Inoue, who let him walk away. One minute, 35. Has he made the count? He's up. And the referee says, box on. He's the end nigh here. Denaire digging deep. He's really hurt. Tries Chris. to hang on. Inoue wow. opening up for the finish. He's working upstairs. Is he looking for one more? Big left to the body. It's a long, long time to survive in there for the old champion who's acquitted himself so brilliantly over the last 11 rounds. But is this the end? Check left hook now. He's hurt Inoue. And Denaire just stops the momentum in his tracks as we knew he could. Reads the left hook. He's still feeling that body shot, Denaire. Struggling to move, get out of the way of the shot from Inoue. Well, the left classic and the respect between these two. Moment there. Pretty. Take my hats off to the, the preparation. His work rate has rarely dropped on before he's inducted into the Hall of Fame. It's a good finish from Inoue. It really is big stuff. Well, they go toe to toe to the final bell. Smiles all round. So, so much better than... Oh, yeah.